What's going on, guys? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking the body beat down here. Michael on the Saturday afternoon, exactly 2.43 p.m. Central Time. <clears throat> you know, I just got to thinking last night and a little bit more this morning about uh, our move uh, into our new house that we're getting and uh, just kind of uh, a lot of things over the past few years and... Uh, kind of thinking about this house and you know the time that we've been here in this location uh, we moved in this house in 2015 and we're leaving uh, in October so we've been here a little while now <clears throat> so a lot of good a lot of bad a lot of things that happen I'm just kind of reflecting on things and uh, you know you, you kind of do that sometimes you reflect on things so uh, I got a little list here, some stuff wrote down uh, that I just thought I'd go over and and really, what's the reason for this video? Well, maybe maybe just to uh, kind of be thankful for some of the things that have happened, and uh, kind of to also think about uh, some of the bad things, the not so great things that have happened. And uh, some of the things to never forget and some to learn and uh, some to grow on so just kind of a little different video from my channel but I think it kind of touches on health as far as just uh, mental awareness mental you know mental being maybe we could say um, so let's just call it that uh, I got the positive things wrote down first, but I think I'm going to do the not so positive things first, just to get them out of the way, because <clears throat> I don't want to be too negative about things today. I want to end things on kind of a positive note, so let's try to do that. And these are just some things random that came to my mind. So uh, the not so positive things over the last almost 10 years. Uh, uh, you know, since we've been in this house. Um, my mom died. March 2016. That sucked. Uh, she struggled for a lot of years. Her mom died. My wonderful, amazing grandma uh, died in 2003. Plus, my mom lost her job of 30 years in a factory. Uh, they shut down and moved. Emerson Electric. Uh, that all happened within a month of one another. In 2000, uh, 2000, I can't speak, in 2003. And uh, she was never the same after that. It was rough, and she just went downhill really quick. Now, she lived a decent long life, I guess. She was 72 when she died. So, uh, anyway, it's just uh, it's kind of one of those things I reflect on, and I think back, and, uh, you know, number one, I wish I'd have been there more for my mom. Uh, sometimes we kids have a, a have a tendency of not wanting to help out and do things maybe like we should. And uh, if I could go back in time, it would be to be there for my mom 110% because she was always there for us kids and all the grandkids and her mom and everybody. She was an amazing woman, and I wish I would have put more time and effort into her uh, into her life and everything. Uh, when her mom died so uh, and up until she died so uh, it's kind of a not so positive thing on a couple of notes there uh, my niece uh, she was 31 years old she died in 2019 uh, December it might be 2020 I think 2019 I get mixed up uh, but she died on December 19th I believe so anyway my niece, uh, she died at 31 years old, supposedly had a seizure or something in the tub, taking a bath, and uh, and uh, they found her dead. So uh, she wasn't just a niece that was long distance, a niece that you've seen once every 10 years. She was a niece we were around continuously. Uh, special, amazing, wonderful, crazy, positive young lady. And she was from the time she was born until she died. Um, she had Turner Syndrome, which if you look it up, you can see there's different things that go on with uh, people that are born with Turner Syndrome. 
uh, she struggled her whole life with different surgeries and different things and you know what have you but she was the most positive amazing uh, person you'd ever met ever so uh, losing her in 2019 was a real big hit and uh, sorely missed wonderful amazing person my brother-in-law died uh, last year 2022 uh, that was my niece's dad so my sister lost a daughter and her husband all within that time frame <clears throat> he found out he had cancer in early 2022 lived just uh, a few months and then ended up dying on uh, September 11th uh, 2022 amazing wonderful fun guy uh, always energetic and telling the dumbest jokes and the dumbest stories he never could finish them and he would just end up laughing and messing everything up and just couldn't tell a story for nothing uh, he wasn't just a brother-in-law again like my niece he wasn't just a brother-in-law that i seen once a year or once every 10 years it was all the time i mean i grew up with him uh, i've known him since the 80s i was a little kid when i met him uh, when he got with my sister <clears throat> wonderful wonderful person just you know just like his daughter and uh so anyway uh, he is sorely missed he was a really great guy and uh so that's just another hit in our family um another thing my wife got epilepsy out of nowhere and i've lost track of time she got it probably 2017 18 i done lost track of the uh, the years at this point but uh, she just got it out of nowhere she was at work one day and it hit her so uh, it's something to do with the part of her brain in the front maybe I can't remember what it, where it's at but and uh, just out of nowhere she's got epilepsy so it's been a very weird surprising struggle that we weren't really prepared for but, you know, we're, we get through it. She goes to work. She still works all the time. And she's one of those that won't be really held down by much of anything. So, um, yeah, anyway. So, just one more thing. Another thing. My son, my oldest son, got diabetes over these past few years since we've been in this house. And uh, that was another shock. <clears throat> uh, my dad had diabetes. He died at 54 years old uh, back in 1997. Uh, he didn't take care of himself. And unfortunately, my oldest son doesn't either. Now, he's kind of had a turnaround, sort of, kind of. He tries to take care of himself. He still eats garbage, but he at least takes medicine. And he's trying to do something. So, big shocker. When he first got it, it was just kind of pre-diabetes. He could have turned his life around, but he didn't. And uh, so many people do not whenever they get diagnosed with diabetes a lot of people just they don't understand that you don't mess around with diabetes or cancer you're done if you mess around you're done so anyway uh, my son got that and he's still dealing with that today uh, i never know if he's gonna be dead or alive i have no idea uh and with me um I have some kind of strange liver problem that's that I've been diagnosed with. Supposedly it's not cancerous as of now. Uh, I haven't been to the doctor in a while because uh, just the health care in our country is just goofy. And I get charged for stuff, but then I'm not charged, but I'm paying stuff I shouldn't have paid. And I'm still getting bills, but I shouldn't be getting bills. And it's in a... It's an hour away where I got to go and it's just a bother and I don't know. I need to go and pay attention, you know, keep a, you know, check up on it and all that. But uh, I'll figure something out with a different doctor or something. So uh, we're going to change health care uh, providers pretty soon. Uh, we're on Ambetter right now and I think we're going to go back to Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, I guess. Uh, here pretty soon the signups start again. So uh, anyway, yeah, I'm diagnosed with some little weird liver disease, so it could be nothing my entire life, or it could end up killing me. I have no idea. So uh, it does cause dry patches on my fingers, 
and they crack open and constantly cracked open and really, you know, very uncomfortable. If you've ever had dry crack skin on your fingers, you know what I'm talking about. But pretty uncomfortable. It's like it all the time. So, uh, so uh, that's a lot of the negative stuff. I guess I could also add in my father-in-law, since we've been here, has had stents put in and stents put in and heart this and heart that and everything else. My mom, uh, my mother-in-law, my wife's mom, uh, has had cancer, double mastectomy and been through radiation and chemo and all that kind of stuff. And all that's happened within this whole time frame we've been in this house. So, and they just live right next door. I mean, I can, even with my bad shoulder, I could throw a rock and hit their house. So anyway, so uh, there's been a lot of negative that's happened here over the past few years. And it really, you know, it's such is life. And uh, we're all on a, we're all on borrowed time. We don't know when we're going to go. We don't know how long we're going to be here. You just got to kind of roll with it and do what you can. So uh, let's, uh, let's end this little video on the positives, okay, guys? The positive things about this house. And I say it like that weirdly, I guess. It's since we've been in this house. So, uh, well, number one. My grandkids. I got two granddaughters. Um, I'll go ahead and say, uh, it really don't matter to me, but my oldest granddaughter is technically not my blood granddaughter. She's, uh, her mom is actually the grand, the mom of my blood granddaughter, my youngest granddaughter, but the oldest granddaughter, she got pregnant. Uh, She's lived with us. The, the mother has lived with us since we moved back pretty much to Tennessee from Las Vegas. And we moved back here in uh, 2014. So she's pretty much been with us the whole time. She got pregnant uh, uh, by my oldest granddaughter's dad. But she's been living with She lived with us the whole time. And, you know, we all got close. And the granddaughter was born. And so she was my granddaughter. So... She's known as my granddaughter, and I am the grandpa. And uh, the differences between uh, my blood granddaughter and my not blood granddaughter, there's none. Uh, there would be zero differences in the way I feel about them. There's, you know, there's nothing else to say. Uh, I love that girl, and I've loved her, and she's loved me since the day she was born. She, the day I held her, her big old eyes just looking at me and. I uh, just fell in love with her, and she's loved me since that day, and it was a time in my life when I really needed to feel uh, some love, and uh, and she's been there ever since, and she's seven years old now, and she's been there, uh, she's been Grandpa's little booger butt uh, ever since, and uh, my other granddaughter, uh, my oldest son, and... Uh, her and uh, the oldest granddaughter's mom uh, were a couple for a little while, and they had a kid. <clears throat> and uh, love her to death. She's a mixture of of the mom and the dad, and and, and like it just uh, uh, it, it's funny. But uh, I love her. They're two totally different granddaughters, two totally different personalities, two totally different people, completely. Um. I love them immensely, and uh, I hope that I can be that kind of grandpa that they remember uh, after I'm dead and gone, that they can at least remember about, you know, hey, he was a good grandpa. I remember running around the yard or doing this or doing these paintings that we've done, or I remember him working out and doing videos. I, I hope they can remember some of those things, and uh, that's the best I can hope for, but I love them to death. Um... <clears throat> now I got wrote down I started my YouTube channel technically I started my YouTube channel back in like 2006 Mikey son uh, which is now named Mikey son TV technically I started my YouTube journey then but I only had a couple of little videos uploaded and I didn't do that until later on um, a couple workout videos and maybe a goofy video here or there of my kid or something I mean, literally, it was like nothing. Uh, my real YouTube journey started about 2016, into the middle, maybe later half. And we'll get into why that, that happened here in just a minute. But uh, let's just talk about 
uh, that for a second, but my YouTube journey really uh, started about that time. And now we'll lead over into another thing. I started cycling, which is something I wanted to do for a million years. Not a million years, but close. I'm not quite a million years old, but... Uh, I started cycling in 2016, and so at that point I started doing videos. I started mostly going and uploading and doing stuff on, on Facebook, and maybe doing some live stuff on Facebook while I'm riding. However I did that, I don't even know. But I started doing uploads and kind of doing stuff for YouTube somewhere around in 2016 during my cycling journey, and it all kind of... Uh, went from there on Mikey Sun TV and Mikey Sun TV blew up to be you know a conglomeration of all kind of different videos and uh, categories and stuff which you can go check out if you want Mikey Sun TV M I K I E S O N TV it's all one word uh, you're gonna go in there and notice though that you're gonna see all my body beat down videos present because I upload all these videos over to there so anyway but you can go check out the playlist and find all kind of crazy cool stuff um so kind of all this stuff kind of uh correlates or coincides and mixes together whatever the word is we're, we're looking for here uh but my cycling took over and i was able to i got a bicycle in 2016 february 11th 2016 i started cycling and then a few months later i got another bicycle so i had two different kind of bicycles that i could ride and then I got another bicycle like a year later, an uh, off-road bike where I could do some trail riding and stuff. And I had three bikes and, and everything was booming and crazy. And, I, you know, it was a great journey. And I have I've did a 100-mile ride in one day. That was a big thing. That's called a century, uh, 100 miles. So I've done a 100-mile ride and I've rode 20s and 30s and 50 miles a day. And I've rode 20 miles... I've rode a lot of rides, a lot of riding in that five and a half year period that I rode. So, uh, so all this kind of coincides with the YouTube stuff. Um, so I, now let's go ahead and just jump up to, I started working out again. So I started working out again in 2021. Also, I want to, uh, make sure that I remember to bring up, uh, the body beatdown channel. You know, I had my Mikey Sun TV channel for years. And then I decided to break off uh, into another channel uh, to where I just focused on, you know, all things health, kind of health related, kind of, you know, things that kind of were closely, uh, you know, revolving around health and fitness and that. And so I made the Body Beat Down channel uh, somewhere in uh, probably about October-ish of 2021. And that's when I kind of left Mikey Sun TV behind. And uh, and that's why you see a lot of my beatdown videos over on Mikey Sun TV. So uh, I'm kind of inserting this clip because I kind of forgot to bring up the Body Beatdown channel. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's get on to the rest of the video. Uh, early 2021. I woke up one day and I was like, you know, I'm still hurting. My shoulder still hurts. Uh, you know, I know I can't do anything great and crazy, but I think I'm gonna go and I'm gonna I gotta get some strength training in my life again because I miss it. I was gonna get some quick adjustable dumbbells, you know, the kind that you can like turn the handles and stuff and and uh, change the weights and just get some nice of those and a nice uh, adjustable bench and leave it at that. But then the second that I thought about doing that. I woke up like the next day and I wasn't hurting at all. Like my arm was not hurting at all and I was like, what has happened? Uh, just a little story, a little history. I hurt both my shoulders doing uh, bad bench pressings on two foreign benches, on a friend's bench and a friend's bench. <laughs> so I hurt one shoulder one time and I hurt shoulder another time. So I kind of get through that in my life, and then we get to about uh, we get to the winter time of like 2015, and I decide, hey, I'm going to play disc golf. You know, it looks weird, but I'm going to go try it. So I liked it. Let's just say I liked it a lot. But the very first day I went to play, I'm sitting there throwing. The very first throw I do, you know, uh, there goes my shoulder, and I can feel it hurting already. 
But then I keep playing and I keep playing and I go back another day and I go another day and I go and I gotta throw. I can't just throw the disc like this or like this. I gotta throw the disc like I'm throwing it around the globe, like around the earth. So I'm ripping my shoulder every time I throw that. I got to the point to where I would go to play just by myself and I'd go up to the basket and just flick my wrist because <laughs> I couldn't even throw anymore. But that's how crazy I am. I don't want to stop. So I had to stop because it was hurting so bad that it was like my arm was being ripped off of my body. So this leads up to the whole working out thing. Eventually that subsided and went away. And that's whenever I was, that's whenever I contemplated really going big with working out. So like I said, it was still hurting whenever I was thinking of getting the dumbbells on the bench. But then I woke up like another day and it was like, what the heck, I'm not hurting. What's going on? So I said, I'm going big, I'm fixing a workout. So instead of just getting the adjustable dumbbells and the bench, I started shopping around and getting some other stuff and getting the bench I got that you see me use every day. And then I got uh, the Smith machine and then I got, I was getting plates and more dumbbells and, and the, the rack and bars, everything just kind of built up. And then I financed uh, the Titan machine. I financed the other machine. I got this and that. And then, you know, I had everything you seen me have. So, and uh, that's been going on since 2021. So, I've, I've, uh, I've experienced a lot of cool stuff. And uh, then we end on top of that, I got drums. I'm finally playing drums after wanting to play drums probably since the age of 10. Uh, one of the very first, uh, earliest things that I can remember. Sorry, we got gnats or fruit flies all the time. Um, one of the earliest things I can remember about being fascinated with drums is my brother has a friend, his name's Kenny, or Kenneth. Uh, he's gone now as well. He's died over the past couple years. Amazing guy. Anyway, he was a drummer. He played in a little little band, you know, and all that. I remember going uh, to watch him rehearse and stuff at the guy's house and all this stuff. And I remember him playing, you know, Bang Your Head, Quiet Rights, Bang Your Head, Mental, uh, mental Health or whatever. And uh, I remember watching him do that, and it was like from that moment, I loved drums. And probably even before that, uh, I probably was in love with uh, Peter Chris from Kiss, you know, because uh, I grew up loving Kiss from before I was even 10 years old. So uh, that kind of planted the seed in my head for drums. And then, you know, after 40 years of beating on desks and steering wheels and beatboxing, you know, all that stuff, <laughs> and, and, and just constantly wanting to play drums, I finally got me some drums a couple months ago. So June 7th, actually, of 2000, uh, 2023. Uh, June 7th is whenever I got my drums. And since then, I've gotten more cymbals and hi-hats and other stuff, and it's a very expensive hobby, passion, love. Uh, so anyway... Uh, so I, I got my drums and I'm going to keep building up the cymbal arsenal until I find what I want. Uh, I'm not good. I just beat on the drums and try to enjoy myself. And that's all I wanted from the day I got them. I wasn't trying to be good. I just wanted to enjoy, you know, just wanted to play along to some music. And uh, that's what I do. Um, also, since we've been here, I started walking. Um, I cut out doing a lot of, I cut out doing my cycling at one point because I was walking, cycling, and working out. And working out was taking an hour or so. My walks take a good 35 minutes, and going for bike rides was either an hour to like an hour and a half just for standard basic rides. So that's a lot of time, five, six, seven days a week uh, that you're putting in to that kind of stuff. So eventually I quit cycling and I went to spinning which is why you see this bike right here where's my finger right there anyway that's why you see that bike right there so I got this a couple years ago and I use it every day uh, I haven't missed I do this 30 minutes a day so that cuts it down and plus you know making sure you know you gotta have you gotta pay attention to the weather and all that kind of stuff and so this allows me to do that every day. So I'm spending 30 minutes every day. I walk 35 minutes every day. 
and then I work out. My workouts range, any, you know, it can be an hour long or so, if not longer. It just depends. And here lately, it's been a little bit quicker because I'm trying to get through with stuff because, you know, the move, we're doing all kind of stuff. So just kind of, you know, pulling back a little bit from some of the working out, uh, the length of my workouts. So anyway, I know we're going into a long video here. We got 24 minutes on the clock, but hey, what are we doing? Um, so uh, I don't know if I've missed anything, any of the important stuff, but I quit. I quit cycling after five and a half years. I, you know, I got this uh, instantly. I was using my bicycle and a bike trainer, if you know what those are. It's where you lock the back wheel into the little machine spinny thing. I was doing that, and then I said, ah, I want to get a bike, uh, exercise bike. So I found this, which I got for a really good deal of seventy-five dollars. These things usually go for hundreds of dollars, but it's. I got a really good deal on that. So uh, that's another positivity in my life. You know, I started doing that again. Uh, I, I also, I don't have that wrote down on here, but also I'm, you know, not that I ever really quit, but I am playing more video games a little bit more. I'm um, enjoying myself. I got a new computer a couple years back in 2020 and uh, play some video games on that. But I also have an Xbox Series S that my youngest son bought me for Christmas uh, last year. Little gnat, I'm going to suck you down in my throat, and I don't even care. I don't even care. Um, anyway, so uh, we got some good positive stuff, guys, going on in the house. We do have some negative stuff, but there's positives. There's always some positives to go along with things. So I got my walks, my spins, my working out, my drums, the YouTube journey, my grandkids, all this kind of cool stuff. And also, we've had a lot of good family times here. Uh, we don't just have our normal, like, immediate immediate family you know wife kids grandkids etc but we have like all my you know my sisters and my brother-in-laws and my brother if he comes into town or, and my wife's side of the family sometimes comes over and we have like family time you know where we'll cook out and we have like the holidays here we'll have a, a one or two days a year that we really go all out and cook out and have a good time we play cornhole and we got music playing and all kind of good stuff so uh, we've had a lot of a lot of nice little family times here, and uh, a lot of there's been a lot of good memories. There's bad memories and there's good memories, but you're gonna have that no matter where you're at. So uh, that's just unfortunate that you gotta have the bad with the good, unfortunately. But uh, that's really all I've got wrote down here. But uh, I guess another good thing I can say is, as of right this second, unless I fall over dead, uh, I'm still alive. I'm still kicking. I'm still working out. Uh, you know, uh, we're on this new adventure uh, with the new house that we bought. Not a good idea. It was an idea. You got to live with it. You either have this that you can do or you have this that you can do or that that you can do. And you kind of pick what you're going to do. And sometimes it's sometimes it's 100% good. Sometimes it ain't. So anyway, it's just kind of advent another adventure we're going on. We're literally going to be moving less than two miles away from this house. It's just right down the road on a road that I do my bike ride on, that I was doing my bike ride on like literally every day. <laughs> it's just right down the road. So uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, it's not a better house than this one. It's just a little bit more updated house than this one. Uh, it's not a bigger house than this one. It's not going to have all the room that I need. Uh, it don't even have a good place for me to park my bus, so I'm having to get that done. Uh, but it's an adventure we're going on, and it's just you know, it's uh, you know, you know more memories, good and bad, are going to be had there, and I hope that I live long enough to uh, be a part of it. And uh, so anyway, guys, just kind of a little journey uh, that I wanted to kind of take you guys on. If you got any questions or any comments or anything, please just leave them. In the comment section, I, I'm open. I'm an open book. I talk really about anything you want to talk about. Uh, so you can ask me any kind of questions. I'm good with anything. Uh, the same thing goes for you. If you have anything you want to talk about yourself from your own personal life and experience, leave it in the comment section. Uh, you know, I like talking about stuff. I know a lot of people are real private about stuff. I'm not private about things. I'll talk about whatever. So not everybody's that way. But, uh, Anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. I hope you have a good day, good, good weekend if you get it. 
And uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff to the Body Beatdown. That's me, Michael, your long-winded host at almost 30 minutes now. And uh, don't forget, please, get up, get out, get red, do it to it. And we'll see you next time on the Body Beatdown. See ya. Get up, get out, get red, and do it to it!